Not too long ago, I made a video called The Narrow Gauge Separation. And for those who haven't seen it, to explain what I mean by separation, I've always found that stories of the narrow gauge engines, especially when compared to stories of the main cast, are oftentimes much darker and a lot deeper, leaving us as viewers to be able to pick it apart a lot more, and especially be able to draw more from it. And just like last time, today we're going to be looking at three episodes that are examples of this, starting off with Bulldog, a classic season 4 episode. It's here we see Falcon and Duke, two of the mid Sodor engines, who would doublehead a passenger train into the mountains, while Duke would insist on being the head locomotive. Motive, Falcon would refuse the proposal and insist on otherwise. The trip was easy going until the two would exit a tunnel. The track runs a bit too close to the cliff, and of course Falcon comes off the rails and, well, well you can see the predicament he's in. As we all know, Duke pulls him to safety, with the assistance of the passengers of course, and in the end everything ends up working out pretty well. But the peril of the situation that Falcon is put into is definitely hard to overlook. Falcon doesn't like the tunnel that him and Duke have to travel through, and as such rushes out of it, landing him in this situation here. And though we don't get a very clear shot of how high the cliff is, it can easily be assumed that a fall like this would not be survivable, especially for Falcon. And in saving Falcon, Duke is then deemed a hero, not only by the passengers, but by Falcon as well. Truth be told, the entire island seems to look at Duke in a hero-like manner, and rightfully so after saving Falcon from a fall that likely would have killed him. It's a very humbling and of course a classic story. Next to Grand Puff, it's probably my favorite mid Sodor story, but through this incident as a whole, I feel shows how dark and how serious these stories often got, and not necessarily in a negative way. Like I said, Duke ends up saving the day and everything ends up just fine, but the peril of the the situation is definitely pretty tense. Couple this with the fact that it's told through a story, one that Thomas is sharing with the other standard gauge locomotives, who even themselves refer to Duke as a hero, the severity of the situation really starts to kick in. Falcon really wasn't far from losing his life, and if Duke hadn't have been there to save him, likely would have. And while in the end everything ends up okay, even still I feel stands as a good example of that separation that we see in the narrow gauge engine stories. Another episode that I think shows this quite well is Duncan Duncan, personally my favorite season 6 episode, and definitely an outlier in this list, as what happens in this episode doesn't put anybody's life on the line, but definitely at least to me is notable. Rusty, Reneas, and Scarloe are sent to help Duncan with an important job, but Duncan has a problem with being impatient, and as such wants everyone to work faster. In annoyment, he bumps the slate trucks, and to the annoyment of the other engines, acts quite rude, but fate sees it that Duncan gets his just desserts, and after bumping the trucks too hard, he ends up tangled up in the incline, which then brings up not only the slate trucks, but Duncan as well. The other engines make it back just as Duncan is being pulled up, unfortunately not able to help much. Once Duncan makes it to the top, the coupling on the incline isn't strong enough to hold him. Eventually the coupling snaps, sending the entire consist back down the incline, and the other engines watch helplessly as Duncan is thrown off the track and then gets stuck in some sort of dirty, muddy swamp, along with the slate trucks. Not only do we see the slate trucks get basically torn to pieces, but we see Duncan stuck in a very perilous situation, albeit one he is rescued from, however. When Duncan breaks the buffers and that initial fall takes place, the model are visually getting damaged, and for a minute we see the remnants of the slate trucks push Duncan further and further into the swamp, so much so that it covers his mouth and muffles his voice. This definitely isn't the craziest accident to ever take place in Thomas and Friends, but to me as a young viewer was very shocking, and I remember having genuine concern for whether or not Duncan was okay or not. The filming of this episode was excellent, and the intensity of the accident as it takes place is something that I wished every accident would follow in. Like I said, you can actually see the trucks get smashed to bits, and though accidents like this are likely expensive to film, plus I'd be lying if I said the smashing of trucks was special in Thomas, case in point Haunted Henry, but regardless of that, this episode still stuck out to me as a kid, and I feel like the intensity of the accident that takes place in it really helped to make that the case, and as such is an episode that I would like to include here. Just like the other episodes, everything ends up okay in the end, but what makes this episode stick out from things like Haunted Henry Henry and other episodes like this, we actually get to see Duncan fly into the swamp. This time it's not just trucks, and while there are scenes that definitely are like this, like I said before, even with it being an outlier, I still feel as if it fits into the separation quite well, and definitely could serve as an example of it. One last episode that I feel shows this quite well is the episode Snow from Season 5. In this episode, Thomas and Rusty are both working near each other in the snow, and to pass the time, Rusty tells Thomas a story. One about Scarloe and one of his trips through the ravine, which unfortunately would end up in Scarloe basically being buried alive. The winch on the slate incline will become jammed, and as such, the slate trucks would seek to do even more damage, breaking the coupling to the winch itself. The trucks would break through the buffers in front of them, and plunge into the ravine below them, not only presumably killing the trucks, but also causing an avalanche. The same avalanche that would not only bury Scarloe, but but his crew as well. The snow boulder full of truck corpses then falls on Scarloe, and presumably Scarloe and his crew are buried alive, stuck suffocating under the snow. Or at least that's what the rescuers would think, as it turns out the heat from Scarloe's boiler helped to make an igloo, not only saving him, but his crew as well, who at the end of it all are just happy to have some hot cocoa. This episode is kind of similar to the last one, in the aspect that we get to see models actually get damaged, and while that's tense enough already, this is all something the trucks did intentionally, and you can't help but wonder if the real destruction that they caused was something that they were actually aware of. 
of. I mean, they did go as far as throwing themselves off of a cliff, so maybe the avalanche was something that they were intending to cause. But speculation aside, what follows this is the real kicker of the episode. As we get to watch as the trucks and the snow that they caused to fall bury Scarloey, the narrator tells us that Scarloey's okay, but does anything Help about me. this scene look okay? Help. I mean, yeah, he's fine. It's a Thomas episode, of course it has a happy ending. But watching this unfold is definitely nerve-wracking. And if the narrator didn't tell you that he was okay, you'd just assume that he was a goner. Definitely a step up from Jack Frost in my opinion. And it's that that puts this episode on this list as well. The situation here is a very serious one, and though it has a happy outcome, it doesn't take away from the severity of what's going on, and that's that an engine and his crew was buried alive in the snow, and in my opinion that's definitely a pretty severe situation, almost reminding me of Put Upon Percy. The Narrow Gauge episodes are some of my favorites, and in a lot of ways are as classic as classic gets in terms of Thomas and Friends. In no way am I trying to highlight anything negative about these episodes or stories, but more point out the maturity in which they held, especially when compared to other episodes. As always, thank you guys again for watching, and if there's any other episodes that you guys think should be featured or that I should check out, be sure to let me know down in the comments, as I'd love your guys' help if I make a part 3. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe as there's always more train content on the way, and as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.